Um, Senator Edgell's recognized for a motion for the minutes. I, I move the approval of the minutes for February 19th. Okay, heard the motion. Any discussion? Corrections? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Here's the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. The motion carries. Next item on the agenda, we have House Bill 4139. Council? Good morning. Good morning. House Bill 4139 has a very laudable purpose. Um, it is simply to clarify and give judges another tool when you have divorce and child custody and visitation issues. The judge can right now look at what's in the best interest of the child. What this bill does is specify some things that have to be taken into consideration if the child is conceived due to a rape. If, and I know we don't use that word in the code anymore, third degree sexual assault. Uh, if that's the case, the victim parent can say to the judge, I'm afraid I don't want him around me, I don't want him around the child, and present some evidence to that effect, and the judge can say, you can't see the child, we're not going to have a co-parenting or joint custody, and uh, let it go at that. That does not mean that the perpetrator parent gives up their uh, <coughs> obligation to support the child. It just means that they aren't allowed to have contact with the victim mother and the child. And that includes cases of incest as well. Uh, the exceptions are if the biological parents were husband and wife at the time the rape occurred and they choose to cohabit and share custody and care of that child, uh, or if the unmarried biological parents subsequently cohabit and establish a home for the child, then obviously you wouldn't have an order saying that the perpetrator parent could not uh, have visitation because they're living together. If the couple later separate or divorce, the conviction creates a rebuttable presumption that sole or joint custody of the child by the perpetrator is not in the child's best interest. And then any custody or visitation arrangements by the court, uh, ordered by the court, must adequately, adequately protect the child and the victimized parent. So it puts everything back on the judge to use their best discretion in these cases, but it also gives the victim parent the opportunity to say, I don't want to ever see this guy again. Okay. Questions for counsel? Yes, Senator Stone. Mr. Chairman, I'm just wondering how many cases are this? So this seems like it would be a pretty rare event. Uh, I would hope so, yeah. but um, this is a bill that came out of interims. It was recommended by the Select Committee on Women and Children's Issues, or whatever that is in the House, where it was all of the women delegates. And I, I'm just assuming, I don't know, there was nothing in the file to indicate this, but I would assume that there's some case that has come up and brought this to their attention. And the judge apparently didn't feel like he had the adequate uh, ability to keep the perpetrator, I guess, away from the child. Or the apparently. Uh, I, I find that a little difficult to imagine because under best interest of the child, the, the judge has almost complete discretion. And Mr. Chairman, is Senator from Hampshire you? Senator from Hampshire, uh, sure. would Senator from Hampshire you? Sure. Senator, Senator uh, I mean, again, I'm not necessarily against this or whatever. I'm just trying to figure out that there must be some need for that or the judge's hands must have felt to be tied. Or what's your thoughts on this? I'm not aware of that before reading this bill. Um, Hate to use the old cliche that uh, I've heard banners about here time and time again, but it's another tool in the toolbox uh, for a judge. Um, one of my concerns was, and, and I think I'm correct in saying, is this is only when there's a conviction. Uh, it's not just merely an allegation. Because right. oftentimes you see in, in custody disputes that uh, everything's going fine, and then all of a sudden when it comes down for a separation 
spouses, the parents, uh, that there, an allegation all of a sudden uh, comes out that uh, one parent or the other, uh, generally the father, is uh, alleged to have committed a sexual assault or a sexual abuse against the, against the child. And don't get me wrong, but nothing worse than abusing or sexually assaulting a child, uh, but it's also pretty bad when you're uh, falsely accused of that as well. And that does happen. Uh, but as far as the bill is concerned, I, I looked over it and it looks to me like it's just something in addition that could help the judge in making the decision as to what is in the best interest of the child. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator, Senator Laird. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to make sure the section that's under that we're amending is uh, Chapter 48 related to parents. Yes. Which is the, uh, I guess, the family law court uh, mm -hmm. portion of this. Uh, and the standard appears to be clear and convincing evidence. Yes. Which seems to suggest this wouldn't require the beyond the reasonable doubt standard that you would have in the criminal case. Right. It does have a, a, a section where it says if there is a convention, these things are kind of absolute, uh, and the parent or guardian could say I, he was convicted, he's out of jail now, and I don't want to see him, and the court would say, you don't have to. There is also a section that says, if there is a problem but there's no conviction, the judge can still consider the fact that this person was accused of sexual assault if there is that clear and convincing evidence. But it is just a factor to, to consider. The conviction's absolute. So if the, if the custodial issue arose prior to the completion of criminal prosecution uh, that the uh, court would be able to make that determination. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions, Senator Miller? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I don't think it's offensive, but what about child support and that type of thing? You're still obligated to pay child support even if your visitation's not allowed. And then the other if something were to happen to the parent um, and the grandparent, does this um, convicted individual come back in to, uh, for the child? That's not specifically addressed in the bill, but it would be like any other petition for custody. Once, you, or it'd be a change or modification in, the, in custody, the judge would still have the ability to consider that. Further questions? Other questions? Senator Angel is recognized for a motion. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd move by House Bill 4139 out for recommendation to pass at the first meeting of the committee on judiciary. Thank you, sir. Any discussion or amendments? Discussions or amendments on the, mo on the bill? If not, you heard the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Few as the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. House Bill 4139 passes out with recommendation due pass, but under the double committee reference be referred to the Committee on Judiciary.